I think about water and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict a little bit differently than most, and maybe by the end of my 20 by 20, you will too. My name is Anne Dare, I am an aspiring sewage diplomat, and I invite you all into the perhaps less than glamorous world of sewage diplomacy in Israel and the Palestinian territories. My fascination with Middle East wastewater issues dates back 10 years. It started with my first visit to the region in 2008, and wastewater reuse was the focus of my graduate research, and through recent fellowships through AAAS, that's allowed me to extend that experience into the realm of science policy. Now, I define sewage diplomacy as the use of wastewater management as a convening issue between nations. It can be used to address transboundary water, environmental issues, agricultural and public health issues, and to build constructive scientific collaborations directly between scientists to scientists. It might not be immediately apparent to you all how sewage can actually be used as a convening mechanism, but in this case, maybe we should consider some fun sewage facts. Everybody makes it, some more than others, um, depending on water availability. It's not all the same. Regulatory and treatment capacity varies quality, and it doesn't just flow downhill. Mixing within aquifers and currents makes your neighbors poor wastewater management everybody's problem. Knowing that, what's the deal with Israel and the West Bank and Gaza? Well, the conflict sits at the intersection of a territorial dispute, access to resources, uh, and a global geopolitical rivalry. A series of wars have resulted in large-scale displacements, shrinking Palestinian areas, and a tight control over the movement of people and goods. Water specifically has been a trigger for the conflict. In 1967, there were numerous political issues afoot but Arab states also began efforts to divert the headwaters of the Jordan River. In response, Israeli defense forces attacked these diversion efforts, which sparked a chain of events leading to the Six-Day War. Nowadays, the water resources landscape in the region is far more complicated, as you can imagine. While Palestinians struggle with water sector development and meeting basic demands, Israeli technologies and know-how for water and wastewater treatment, irrigation, and arid land agriculture have become world-renowned. The situation in Gaza has also become well-known. Conflict and control over resources means residents receive as little as two hours of electricity per day, tap water is undrinkable, and over 90,000 cubic meters of raw sewage flows into the Mediterranean Sea each day. This is an unfolding environmental and public health catastrophe that has and will continue to reach beyond Gaza's borders. In the West Bank, because of just close geographic corridors and an underdevelopment of the wastewater sector, there are these issues of transboundary flows of untreated wastewater from the West Bank into Israel. This issue is bound together by complicated economics, policies, politics, and a lack of trust and transparency. This poor wastewater management means there are many places where water flowing in the streams is essentially domestic sewage, which is what we can see in these photos. On the surface, this poses a threat to public and environmental health, reduces quality of life, and is a political nuisance. Below the surface, infiltration of sewage into the groundwater has led to increases in chloride and nitrate concentrations. Groundwater wells on both sides of the border have been forced to close cutting off access to precious water resources, which poses a real threat to the lives and livelihoods uh, of those living in this arid environment. Because pollution knows no boundaries, this is where the value of sewage diplomacy comes in. In a place where water is a critical resource, threats to that resource represent an issue that will open doors, bring people to the table, and start a conversation. Maybe not BB and a boss themselves, but definitely others. It's not always easy, though. In science policy, we talk about evidence-based decision-making. In this place that is so fraught with narrative issues, distrust, misconceptions, and a history of broken promises, unearthing the truth is a real challenge. And so sometimes this concept of shuttle sewage diplomacy is necessary, shuttling between stakeholders until you can find reality. And for this reason, it's critical to engage with stakeholders at every level, the Israeli and Palestinian technicians and engineers, researchers, scientists, and regulators, farmers, industry representatives, security officials, other international donor agencies, UN organizations, and anyone with a perspective. 
In addition to listening and gathering information, it's also critical to actually get people together in the same room to talk about these issues. So there's a track to diplomacy movement among Israeli and Palestinian civil society, academia, former government officials that's happening in the wastewater space that's really advancing the conversation outside the normal political channels. Both sides stand to benefit from improved Palestinian wastewater management. For the Palestinians, they really have a lot to gain. It's a chance at water independence, agricultural sector development, economic development, job creation, and improved quality of life. It's a chance to protect their natural resources and offer hope for the future. For Israelis, it's primarily about the protection of their shared environment. But for both, cooperation and elimination of this shared nuisance may lead to improved transparency, increase in trust, and support peace building. Now, if you had asked me 10 years ago, on that first visit to the Middle East, back when my understanding of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict was pretty much what Wikipedia told me about it, that today I would be so personally and professionally invested in employing sewage, of all things, as a tool for diplomacy, I would have thought that was absolutely crazy, perhaps as crazy as some of you thought the title of this 20 by 20 was. But today, after being elbow deep in wastewater, having to throw away a couple pairs of shoes because they and of themselves were now biohazards, talking about diarrheal disease more than I ever cared to, and hearing directly from those that are committed to a better future, I really, I see a place for myself and sewage in diplomacy. Solutions to these complex transboundary problems require a political will and a commitment to a mutually sustainable water future. After two years as a fellow, I believe in the power of the scientific community to see beyond politics and advocate for cooperation and peace, even in the most difficult of spaces. Thanks. <laughs>